Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, and welcome back for more punishment. <laughs> more expose. Uh, this is um, this is one that developed literally in five minutes. Five minutes. I had something else planned. I was going to do first on Patreon, a Patreon exclusive, and I saw this and it was like, okay, no, we we got to run with this because this one is a great way to recap um, exactly well how things go in the bigger scheme of thing throughout the years and the centuries and the generations and in a Kali Yuga uh, the realization that who is at the top of the pyramid who is controlling the planet is absolutely utterly demonic and as dark as dark can get and yet still some people are unable to connect the pictures uh, and put these things together because of the programming I've done a couple videos sharing, and I know others have as well, the fact that, yes, King Charles, now King Charles, uh, you know, at the time of the videos, it was Prince Charles, is a blood relative of this guy to the right, whom the world knows uh, as Vlad Tepish. This is Vlad the Impaler, uh, who is thought to be possibly one of the major sources of inspiration for the Dracula uh, book by Bram Stoker. Again, he was known for impaling people. This was his uh, preferable form of punishment for those captured uh, in war. And he would dine in front of them uh, while they were writhing in agony, sometimes taking uh, days to pass on. There's many woodcuts and depictions of this. Um, gosh, this goes all the way back to me being around 11 and 12. I was actually reading about this history and studying it for some strange reason. Uh, I didn't know at that time why. King Charles is... A descendant of uh, this person and as many know it really is a keep it in the family thing when it comes to royalty they do intermarry with specific blood relations primarily uh, and even those that they pull in that seem to be outsiders when you go back far enough and trace it uh, you do find that they are all really still tied together uh, 23andMe, uh, Ancestry.com, yeah, that's something for us of this generation to see and to realize, but they've been tracking uh, DNA and genetic lineage far, far longer, uh, far longer, and they've also had the ability to um, check things that we could check now way back in time. Uh, again, there's so much more that's hidden than it's given to us. You see this this coin here showing the dates 1431, 1476. Uh, so, you know, again, this was a long time ago, many, many generations ago. Who is this person? Well, this question is, is this the worst person ever? Elizabeth Bathory. You know, again, a noble, <laughs> you know, the term. God, how can you call any of these people noble, you know, and lords and ladies? But when you get down to it, these are the titles that have been given to these uh, royals, the dukes, the duchesses, the kings, the queens. Uh, in many cases, the real owners of the land, even right now, when you look to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, who owns the vast majority of the land? It's the royal family. It literally is. You could say, well, no, that's just a conservation thing. Uh, you're drinking the Kool-Aid. It's still the royal family when you get down to it. Elizabeth Bathory slaughtered people to stay beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, mom just wants you to take the dog out. She literally, and uh, this is something that was noted by many, many historians. There's been books written about this. Uh, of how she would bathe in the blood of virgins. This, and, and literally kidnap virgin women in order to have that blood to keep her looking youthful. This is, 
again, some would argue she is more of the inspiration for Dracula than Vlad is, but the reality is they're cousins. This is this is the same family which does trace back to the current family on the throne in the UK, England. Ah, uh, yeah, look at this meme. Uh, I bathe in the blood of virgins. Call me. Well, you know, again, there there was about 80 to 100 years uh, that separated those two as she came latter. Actually, she was concurrent with uh, Bloody Mary, uh, Mary Queen of Scots. Uh, Vlad the Impaler, Elizabeth Bathory, and Prince Charles are all related. We know that for a fact. That That is just a fact. And there is a legacy there. You know, if you look to this on Wikipedia, uh, it just, it talks about charges leveled and witch hunts. Uh, it, and there's there's no real, um, it was never proven. Yeah, well, again, uh, <laughs> they quote the science, they quote the facts all day long. Uh, they, they say things like, that's fake news. Uh, well, you know, these rumors were the quote-unquote fake news of the day. It, it, these terms even, you know, they might have changed the terms a little bit, but the reality is always the same. I, you know, I know. I'm just kind of reading this, you know. Um, other writers such as Michael Farron in 1980 Nine have said that the accusations against Bathory were supported by testimony from more than 300 individuals, some of whom described physical evidence and the presence of mutilated, dead, dying, and imprisoned girls found at the time of her arrest. Um, I bet you you could go to some of these areas and still find, you know, grandparents children granddaughters that talk about it that, talk about it, that because the 300 is a lot of people that that's a lot of evidence and and for them to just shove it under the rug but because it's royalty are we surprised you know are we surprised that they just sweep it under the rug and that they can sweep it under the rug and the court systems are all made by royalty so if you have some tie into the court system if you have even some dirt on somebody in the court system, you can get away with a lot and you can hurt a lot of people and no, it's it's not fair, but this is just the world that we live in. So I, I don't have any use for the court systems. I don't think that they have really the only use they have for us is to keep them going, to keep feeding them money, you know, whenever you have to get a lawyer for something and to uh, people don't get along how many thousands of dollars are emptied out of bank accounts just so somebody can fight in court because you don't know the rules. You don't know what, <laughs> you don't even know what it means when they they have these statements and, and this is, you know, against so-and-so. And it's just a huge mess and it's a huge racket. And like I always say, you know, we have to figure out ways to stop supporting these people. Um. Can I ask you, do you feel anything from her now? Is um, I'm curious if you could ascertain where she is. Is she still in the astral or has she reincarnated? Or uh, what, what do you, where do you see her energy, her consciousness? She's stuck. So she's stuck. She's stuck. She's not able to speak and uh her heart chakra is completely shut down her solar plexus is really tight um <coughs> she's not in a good place so you know she died in 1614 mm. right so this is um 400 years uh, 410 years later and her soul is still stuck, be you know again because of uh, the energies of dealing with um, what she had done uh, karmically. So you know while we we don't get uh, what the Christian perspective is when we remote view and we look uh, at where people are. Again, um, Cindy was able to contact my mother right after um, she had passed on. And, you know, she was very much in a peaceful place. In fact, she recreated her apartment 
and she was just doing the usual things that she was doing in her apartment, trying to work through uh, this lifetime of which, you know, she, um, on the whole, was a, a really wonderful person that really didn't um, commit any grave sins that I know of, not, not at all. She was very, very peaceful. Now, when you have somebody that is really committing these type of atrocities, it can stick them in a purgatory of a sense. It can stick them in their own little hell that may take hundreds of earth years. Of course, time is different in the astral. Uh, thousands. It, it could take uh, many lifetimes worth of another soul. Another soul that doesn't do these type of things uh, may have, you know, five, six incarnations, 10, 20 incarnations before a soul that's, that's gone down this darkness can, uh, free themselves enough. So with her, there's still some type of a karmic, uh, reaction that needs to come forth that she's not prepared to deal with. Um, everything that did happen in the 3d, it's not like you get to just shake it off when you do call in that kind of darkness and that kind of suffering and those kind of demons, they can circle around you. So you can, you know, try to be reborn into this world, but there's going to be things that she'll have to answer to. And I don't think that she's ready to do that right now. I mean, the clamping down on my throat chakra that I felt and heart chakra just tells me she's, she is in a, a place of fear so you know take that for what you will but this is what's happened to her her energy is not in a good place you know and while we're doing this then that makes me um think about him uh how about vlad tepish uh how about vlad the impaler um can you ascertain what's his situation at this point in time as well he his sense of self is really damaged it's so very very damaged again he he does not want to make an attempt to try to come into the world at this time um he's very small him and and the other one they're very small energies they don't have a lot to work with even if they do come and be reborn onto the 3d they do not feel safe so uh there's things going on there that i don't quite understand this is a different realm this is a different world that i normally don't visit so i can't see it very well it's real dark we, and we want to reiterate too um from our understanding because we've we've looked at hundreds and thousands of people on the other side most people don't don't go through this because most people don't have these souls that have have created such uh, despair and and karmic retribution of a negative kind. It's very true. It's very true. Most people, you know, like like we say. I mean, the judgment is on yourself, but it really feels like these people have seen what they are what they have done. And they're not having uh, very good reactions to it. And what I keep seeing, too, is the people that they harmed, there's a lot of energies there suppressing them, too. Those energies come out of the woodwork. It's not like these people are allowed to just freely come back up to the surface to, to note themselves, to show themselves, to live it again. Um, there's uh, something very... I keep seeing small and dark and a lot of little, little, small, very nasty little demons all around them. But that came from the people that they were killing. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah, you know, there is absolutely karmic repercussion uh, that happens. And, and literally they are, we're always all creating our worlds. What these people have done has enabled them to be in the afterlife encircled literally by the demons uh and their their life source energy their their spark from source is is basically uh being utilized as as food for the demons 
And here is an eye-opening fact. King Charles owns the copyright to the King James Bible. This was very, very funny as this guy is doing a meme saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, when, when people who think they're doing right, and this is the thing, most people that go to church per se, whether it's Catholic Church, Anglican, whatever, you know, any denomination, um, and I've gone to many just for fellowship and also to, to kind of do a, a deep dive into studying the psychology of people as well. And they don't realize that they're actually going into a den of lions in so many ways. As this whole system of belief has been given to us by this, by this control system, by these people. This is who these people are. Whether we're talking about King Charles, Elizabeth Bathory, um, Vlad Tepes, or whether we are talking about King James, yeah, King, J King Charles owns the copyright to the King James Bible because, again, it comes through the crown. And King James was also, again, the founder of many Freemason lodges, he was, again, in the secret, at, at the pinnacle of the secret societies of those that we see. Uh, he was, you know, the, the, the head of the Masonic Lodges in Scotland and England. So there you go. And he commissioned the 1611 edition of the King James Bible. And it remains the Freemason uh, Bible. And it's the one that's used in all the Masonic Temple rituals. The thing you got to realize is, you know, again, the first commissioning of the Bible itself came from a Roman emperor that was about conquest, warfare, expansion of empire, holding on to power at any cost. And, and again, I've said it dozens of times, you know, he killed his firstborn son and, and also his, his wife because he feared they were going to usurp his power. This has nothing to do with the teachings of Yeshua. But when you look close, it, it, it should be just so obvious, and yet somehow people blindly go off the cliff because they are under the God spell. And how could you possibly think that anything coming from the crown could actually be uh, something that could be uh, saintly? and truly benevolent it's not it's never been sure there are some nuggets in there um, but i think again you could find other sources of wisdom true wisdom because uh, really again when you look to the old testament it, it's not about the afterlife it's not about the afterlife at all no it, it's about maintaining your identity it's about tracing lineages. It, it's a way of, again, keeping that 23andMe uh, Ancestry.com thing going of this is where you come from, you know, meaning your DNA, your blood lineage. It, it has nothing to do with the afterlife. In fact, many um, didn't, as far as in, in the Jewish uh, take on things, many didn't even believe in an afterlife. Now, you also had the mystical side of it the Kabbalah, you also had the, the Hermetic and the Gnostic side of things, uh, which again, were not for the masses. And even the Bible itself was not for the masses uh, un until, you know, 500 years ago or so, when they started with the printing press. Before that point in time, it was never for mass uh, consumption where you could actually look at yourself. It was, you know, this is what we teach you from. This comes, we say, this comes from God, the Creator, and in reality, it's it's the again intergalactic, interdimensional pirates that have waylaid the Earth that are the ones that have given us this whole mindset. So yeah, rights and permissions for the King James version of the Bible. Uh, they're vested in the crown, administered by the crown's patentee, the Cambridge University Press. When we look at the Secret Society, Skull and Bone Society, for instance, at Yale, you know, Yale is one of the most powerful institutions, so is Harvard, obviously, Oxford and Cambridge, you know, it, this is all how they control us. They control us through uh, teaching us what they want us to learn. 
Yes, absolutely. You know, it. there is a copyright, so to speak. Of course, it's been so many years and you know, nobody's going to get sued, uh, I don't think. <laughs> but you have to realize this is from the crown. This comes from the crown. And, you know, there's many, many uh, different versions and all. And we could find that, yeah, absolutely. Now that we have some older pieces, fragments, we can see that a lot of these translations are not even what was originally said. Uh, so it's fascinating. I'll have all the links for you guys. Uh, again, you know, <laughs> releasing God's word to copyrights help or hurt Bible translations. Oh, the, the, the inability to put this together when this is the mainstream media. For the last 2,000 years, this is the mainstream media. The Bible is the biggest mainstream media source that, that we've had in, in thousands of years. And, and they're doing the same thing with the Koran, which comes out of the same roots. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's interesting to note, too, um, that there's a lot of rumors that do have a lot of um, perhaps validity in the fact that Shakespeare really was a pen name of uh, Francis Bacon. And Francis Bacon, again, was a, a brilliant uh, part of the system. But when you realize, this is among Americans, a survey, how much of the Bible have you personally read? 30%, several passages. 15%, at least half of it. 13%, only a few sentences. 10%, these, these are, again, amongst Americans and, and, and Christians, none of it, all of it more than once, 9%, all of it 11%, almost all of it 12%. So 20% say they've read it through at least once or more than once, one in five. And yet they have this just abject blind belief because they're under a spell. That's really what it is. It is a spell. Absolutely. And there is a lot of power. Somebody came and said, why is there power in the word in the name of Jesus? Because if you know and understand that consciousness affects this world's reality, when you have billions of people, as two billion people on, on the planet say they're Christian, one billion of them Catholic, uh, that's a lot of consciousness that's putting energy into a line of thinking. So two billion people believe there's power in the name of Jesus, even though he was never called Jesus. That's a lot of power. So you just tap right into it. You just plug right in. Uh, again, in chaos magic, uh, and I've studied a lot of different magical systems and theory. Um, I've gone deep down every rabbit hole I could go down. In chaos magic, you could create something that's that's not real, never existed. You get it out there into the mainstream, or even in a small group, you can make a power current that is palpable just by having others believe in it. So even if you know Jesus didn't exist like we think, um, there's still so much power behind it because two billion people believe so. So belief in whether it's Spider-Man or, or whether it's the Hulk or anything, there is power there. It's all about belief. That's what it boils down to because we are co-creators. So, yeah, you know, miracles have been done in the name of Jesus and they've been done in the name of Buddha and they've been done in all these different names. We could go on down or they've been done in the name of nothing because it's all about belief energy is very powerful and we have the ability to manipulate it in in so many different ways and uh you know we can choose to do what we want with it we, we really do we have free will to a very high degree and so many people they want to do good and i see that they want to do good but they continually just follow the bible which was given to us by the crown by these people that we were just telling you about and if you read their biographies i mean they are a mess i mean these folks i thought i was a mess these people are a mess the things that they do you know uh, agreeing to marry off their 
22 year old daughter to their 22 year old cousin stuff like that for them it's normal it's normal and it's okay and what they do to children it's just normal and and they get away with it and these are the people we give all of our energetic power to if you are a believer in that bible and most people haven't read it but once you realize and find out that those stories from the bible come from other stories that are much 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 older and they're hijacked and they're taken and they're plagiarized and it you just realize you feel the dirtiness in it it's like you know that that it, you just start to realize that's a nasty trick that's just not nice but you look at the source look where the bible's coming from it's coming from people who are not nice no, absolutely. You know, I shared with you guys. Uh, um, so, not 1976 was the first year I read it cover to cover by myself, and and nobody asked me or made me to. I just I just wanted to. And seven, 1971 is is I was starting to attempt to read it, as I was still in uh, kindergarten or first grade and just learning to read. So. I would have the neighbor who was three years older than me read to me out of that and the Catholic Missal because I was trying to figure out what happened to my brother that had died. Um, so, you know, it was a quest for me. And then in the early 80s, I would say it was about 82 that I realized this is an E.T. thing. So, you know, the Bible is the most printed book of all time, most published book of all time. And it's still the best selling book of the year, even though they won't um, really count that. And, you know, you'll have Harry Potter or something else being uh, the number one book of the year. But when you really look at how many are printed every year, you don't get any more mainstream than that. That is the most mainstream. There's over 500 different uh, translations. It's been translated into 3,000 different languages. This this is uh, it, th this is the most mainstream of mainstream. This is the very definition of mainstream. When you look at the life of uh, King James, you know again, uh, and and you look, uh, he was the son of Mary Queen of Scots, and you you look at who these people are. They're no different than the royalty of today, because you know again, it it it's it's a very very dark. Uh, bloodline series of bloodlines that they are, are are being initiated into and they are born into uh, these people all were kind of for the most part some worse and some better than than others but when you when you look at their history you know it's it's all about control it's all about ego it's all about um, you know again dominance it's, it's everything that they sell us on now they they God fearing, it, yeah, it's not in the way that you would think. And and again, it, it, fear is a restricting energy. It's not expansive. There there is no love in fear. And you know, one of the best sermons from a Lutheran uh, priest that I had ever heard was on uh, Easter and all, and and talking about that that the opposite of love isn't hate, it's actually fear. So again, if you believe that the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom, then you're still totally in the dark. You really don't get it. Uh, there's, there's, it that's, not the, that's not the creator of this universe. These people are about control. They're all about control. Yeah, they're all about ego. They're all about dominance. They're all about luxury. Uh, they're all about wealth. You know, again, it's it's done through taxation. They have learned the draconian way. And when we look at them, we see, now Cindy was talking about um, Mary the First, or also known as Bloody Mary for a reason, again, uh, as, as she did send, sentence people to uh, death by immolation, you know, literally to be burned alive. This is a God-fearing Christian woman. Uh, yeah, right. Again, everything is upside down and inside out. You know, what does that definite definition really mean when you say God-fearing Christian woman? That's what we should be looking at. If, if it's something about uh, maintaining power and control and expansion of your ego through expansion of your kingdom and things like lineage and successor and the public has been sold on the fact that you should, you know, always be... be, be worshiping these 
people uh, again look at our modern entertainment industry and and look at p diddy and look at madonna and look at taylor swift look yeah i mean look look at him and all the rest of them uh, if you get the drift this is all twisted these people are not to be emulated these people are are under the power of demonic entities in 1522 mary at the age of six was contracted to marry her 22 year old cousin king charles v the holy roman emperor uh, yeah because again you know it's the holy roman empire that the bible comes out of and they can't make the correlation because you're under a black magic spell and i know you know again most of our all our regular viewers understand this and the fact that francis bacon and the first uh version of the king james bible Oh, yeah, it, it's definitely got bacon all over it. You know, he is definitely um, behind this, and it might have been his pen uh, that was literally working on the translations. And when you look again at translations, you know, one of my uh, friends uh, of my late teens, early 20s, was you know, born again. And e even though I could point out a hundred different verses that are in opposition to each other, he'd still come up and just look blankly and say, there's not one error in the Bible. It's all been true. It's all been proven true. It's The reality is you're under a spell. Snap out of it. Because again, what is it telling you? It's telling you that because you are born you know you really have no excuse to not be punished because you're born you should be punished what i mean that is the biggest gaslighting the world has ever known and that's what this is you have to throw yourself on the blood so what you're doing is you're condoning violence you're condoning blood sacrifice you're condoning them sending us off to war dressing us up in our sacrificial suits and sending us off to war to fight for king and crown what could be more idiotic mm. it's you know you really have to look at the source and it didn't come from the creator it didn't come from any creative being at all it came from the crown it came from the rich it came from those who want to maintain control so Everything in that Bible that is written is a manipulation. Sure, there's some gold nuggets in there, but my gosh, I mean, why why do we continually hold up the Bible as if it's so true? And when you hear someone on a bigger YouTube channel say, oh, they're coming to get your Bible. Well, it, it would probably serve a lot of people very well that they're not manipulated any longer, that they're not controlled any longer, that they break the God spell and they finally search out and figure out who they are. Oh my gosh, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. But the only reason they say things like that, gonna come and get your Bible, it's, it's like reverse psychology it's, it's like children it's like you know it's, so then so many people are gonna say no no don't come take my bible but if you really truly understood it ah, you would be okay with it and um i don't know we do what we do because we want to see people free i remember when i was kind of chained down uh when it comes to belief systems and i really felt horribly about myself i honestly did I, I couldn't figure out why do I like tarot cards? Why do I like astrology? Why do I like the cosmos? What is wrong with me? I liked all the things that were, according to that Bible, they were bad. So I thought I was bad. So it really was uh, manipulating the mind in a very negative way. And if you just stand back and release your need to be right, you know, then you realize where it really comes from and you can see the controlling aspect of it all. Absolutely. You are a unique version of source. And so you are a co-creator. This, this is, again, the power comes from inside you. And we are meant to be doing our own thing and walking our own path when you look at the business models that are out there right now and those big corporations that have you read from scripts. You know, those are exactly 
uh, the type of energies that we don't want because they restrict our creativeness. What are you here to do? You're here to create. That's what your purpose is. It's simply to be you. I, I saw Eckhart Tolle once, you know, he was doing this thing, you know, what is my purpose? And, and you know, it's just laughing about it. your purpose is to be you. That's that's your whole purpose. What is that? Now, it, it, you know, we all have what may be perceived as flaws, but again, we're all learning to swim, so to speak. <laughs> we're all a work in progress. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Please do like, share, subscribe, and try to awaken as many as we can. We can shift this paradigm. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.